Another NURBS modeling tool that's used quite often is LOFT. With LOFT, you can take two or more NURBS curves and turn it into a surface. Let's give that a try. We'll start with a two-curve surface. In fact, we'll build a curtain for a theater, like a curvy curtain you might find on the stage. So I'm going to go to the top view, maximize that, and then go to my CV Curve tool, Create CV Curve Tool. I'm just going to freehand draw a cross-section of that curtain as if you're looking at it from above. So I'm just going to click a whole bunch of times, give myself lots of undulations in that curtain. When I'm done, I'll hit Enter to freeze that, and there's that curve. Now what I can do at this point, instead of drawing a second curve by hand, is simply copy this one. So while it's selected, I'll go up to Edit, Duplicate, and make a copy. And then I'll go back to the Perspective View. Now the copy is in exactly the same place as the original, so while the copy is selected, I'll go to the Move tool and move that up. And for this model, I just want to move that up in the air, since we're making a curtain. And there you have two curves, the original curve and the second curve, which is a copy. Now I have the minimum I need to create a loft. So all I need to do is select those two curves. Now, the order that you select the curves for a loft does matter. However, when you just have two, as opposed to three or four or five, it's not so critical. So let's just go ahead and select those. I'll select the bottom first and shift select the top second. And now I can go to the surfaces and then go straight to loft. And the defaults work fine. So there's a loft. What Maya has done is drawn a surface from the bottom curve up to the top curve. If I turn on shading, we'll see that better. And I'll also deselect. And there's that undulating curtain-like surface. Now, just like with Revolve, I still have construction history, so I can manipulate my top or bottom curve. For instance, I can go up to the Select by Object type, turn off everything but curve, select that top curve, and now I'm free to transform it. I can move it, I can rotate it, I can scale it. I can also go in and turn on the vertices and move those around if I want to. Now, to make a nice clean loft, it's actually better to have identical curves, at least identical to the point that they have the same number of vertices. Now, if I make a copy, that's guaranteed. If they didn't have the same number of vertices, the NURB surface would not be quite as neat. You'd have regular subdivisions and whatnot. So one good trick is to make a copy of your first curve. Then if you want to, you can change the shape of moving the vertices around or scaling or rotating it. In any case, so there is a loft just with two curves. Let's try making one out of multiple curves, say three or four. So I'm going to delete these curves in the surface for now. One trick to do that is just go back to the select by hierarchy up here and drag a box over everything. Now since I don't have any groups right now, if you're on select by hierarchy type with no groups in the scene, it's just going to select all the objects. And once they're selected, I can just hit the delete key on the keyboard and get rid of those. So now let's try a more complex loft. In fact, let's try making something that looks like a slide, like a slide on a children's playground set. So I'm going to go back to the top view here. And we're going to draw a cross section of what that slide might look like if it was cut right down the center. So I'm going to go back to my CV Curve tool. In this case, I'm going to go back to Snap to Grid to make it a little bit neater. Then I'm going to draw a cross section. So I'm going to draw a few bevels as if they're little side guards. And I want to pay attention to where I'm clicking because I want both sides to be identical, at least in terms of the little side guards here. Now I'll hit enter when I'm done. So if you can imagine that the person sits here and these are little side hand guards right here and right here. That's the top view. I'm going to actually rotate this a little bit in anticipation of making copies. So I'm going to go back to a front view here and then rotate it. Let's make sure I'm rotating the right direction. I better go to the perspective view. And that's going to work for me right there. If 
So that's going to be the start of the slide. In fact, I'm going to move it up in the air with the Move tool. Turn off my Snap to Grid so I don't forget. Move it up in the air. And I want to make some copies. Again, edit Duplicate. And then I'll move each copy. I'll move each copy down a little bit and rotate each copy to form where the slide actually goes. So there's one copy. I'll make another. Now there's one trick I haven't talked about in terms of transform tools. Now if you have to switch between them quite a bit, there's actually default keyboard shortcuts for that. If I hit my E key on the keyboard, it skips to rotate. If I hit my R key on the keyboard, it skips to scale. So W is actually move, E is rotate, and R is scale. So we're going between W, E, R, W, E, R rapidly allows you to select between those transform tools. In fact, you can see the tools change over here on the left. W, E, R. W, E, R, to swap between transforms. So in any case, going back to this, I'm on my third copy. I'm going to rotate it, position it. I'll make one more copy now. Move that. And then rotate it. So it's a short slide. It'll be a slide nevertheless. So now I have four curves. One, two, three, four. Now I can loft. Now here the order does matter. I do want to select an order that makes sense for the surface of flow. For instance, if I select this one and then shift select the last one, then go back up to these two in the middle, Maya will go in that order. So it'll thread the surface to the first, then the last, then the middle two. It doesn't make any sense. You really need to go in order. So for instance, I would actually want to select the top then the second, then the third, then the fourth. In that case, I'm just using the shift tool to select those. So again, in order one, two, three, four. In this case, the bottom one is last. Now let me show you what happens if you select an incorrect order. It's going to get kind of all mixed up. So I'm going to delete this surface. The curves are still there. Now I'm going to select in a strange order. Maybe first, then third then fourth and second. And now I'll try to loft. And it kind of looks OK at the beginning, but in reality, it's twisted. You see how it bends over itself? That's because I select them in the incorrect order. So let me just delete that. So again, keep in mind which order you're selecting, first, second, third, fourth. And I'll go back to loft. So there is a slide. So you can see how you can have a more complex shape with more curves. And they don't have to necessarily be in a row either. They can be anywhere in your scene. I can have this go and make a U-turn if I want to, or make a bend, or have more wild undulations in it. It's really up to you what you do with it. Just keep in mind the order that you select them is important.